Hello, hello, hello. It's been a while since I made some content. Um, you know, life has been happening, but I did say that I'm going to make some videos for these really nice Nime AI nodes. And quite frankly, this is something I'm super excited about. And Nime launched the 5.2 version on the 6th of December, and there were some upgrades to that as well. So I was kind of waiting for that to really dive into this. So I was just like playing around, you know, getting my feet wet with the nodes. And I figured out like a very quick use case that someone could easily use this for, maybe even in an, even in a production uh, environment. So this case is basically using ChatGPT to assign sentiment scores to sentiment. So basically what I did was there's a nine workflow that uses deep learning to do sentiment analysis and they use reviews from an IMBD uh, database. So I pretty much uh, read in that file from that workflow. I have the workflow linked here and I sampled 30 of those uh, 30 of those records. So what I want to do is there are sentiments here, right? So I'm going to send all of these texts to ChatGPT and I'm going to have it respond with a sentiment Then I'm going to cross reference against these scores to see how it's performing pretty much. So I've already started building this out. So here you need to provide your API key from OpenAI. So I just pasted it down here only in the passwords. If you don't have one, I'll put a link. It's pretty easy to get one. It does cost money, but quite frankly, this is, this is very cheap. I'll tell you exactly how much my experiment today cost me when I'm done. So you just connect this to here and you're going to select, you know, the credential that has the key stored as a flow variable and you select your model. So I'm using GPT, GPT 3.5 turbo, which is again, it's pretty cheap right now here. You just provide like an empty template that is used in this node. And I pretty much grabbed this from a sample workflow that I'm had on this and I can put a link for that as well. So over here, I am sampling, like I said, 30 of those records. I'm just checking really quickly to see that the distribution is fairly balanced and it's exactly balanced here. And I'm making this a variable because I'm going to be sending those texts one by one to the model for a sentiment to be, a sentiment to be returned. I'm sure there's probably more efficient ways to do this. You could like send multiple and have multiple responses. Maybe you could, could get like responses as a JSON, but right now I'm just doing this one by one. So it's going to send it one by one and it's going to collate everything in a loop. I have the timer here because I want to see how, how long this takes and we can build the part that compares the performance against the provided scores. Okay. I want to come back in because I got an error. I guess one of the texts was super long, so I could, uh, check the, you know, tokens or maybe even characters or number of words to estimate how long these are and like do some filters to do shorter ones. Um, but instead, I'm just going to see if I can use the bigger model, but let me see how much that costs really quickly. Um, uh, so it's not that pricey. So I'm just going to change it to that and see if I have access to this model. Okay. I do. So I'm just going to run this again. So basically restarting that. So let's see what happens now. Okay. It's finished. It actually didn't take that much time. So the timer says that, hmm, I think this might be the one I'm looking at. I should be looking at. Yeah. Cause I think, okay. I think this is going to have number of executions. Yeah. I think this is going to have all the iterations that was done. So is this in milliseconds or what? Let's look at the information. But overall, I feel like it took under a minute to run everything. So execution. Yes, in milliseconds. So we can convert that five, one, nine, six, four. So that was, that wasn't even a minute. It was po uh, point 0.8 of a minute. So that's pretty fast. I think I reckon that's rather fast. All right. So we have the output. Now we're going to do some transformations. Now I did neglect to add the, uh, record ID here, but it's really not a big deal. Just going to do it after the fact. It was a chunk, so we did them one by one. So it's going to be in order. So I'm going to use the counter. The counter node is something that you, so counter generation is something you have to download separately. So I'll put a link. Uh, I use this a lot to assign record IDs to things. 
So I'm going to start it at zero because the uh, iteration starts at zero as well. So uh, we can now see that they're pretty in order, pretty much in order. So I have made it's my personal mission. Wow. Oh boy, Isabel. I think my summary, it's been follows, you know, so if I go here, I can see it's, it's the same order. So I, wow. Oh boy, Isabel. I think it's been a while. The next one should be something about follows and it is, so it's in the right order. So I'm just going to isolate all the AI columns. And I'm going to join the counter generation to the iteration so that I have everything in a nice, uh, nice table. So I'm going to use the row filter, the row filter node. I'm like so hyper today for some reason. I think I had too much caffeine. So yes. And I only want the AI messages. Cool. I run that and I'm going to bring in a joiner node. Let me just really eyeball this to make sure that Oh, right. So I forgot to show you this. I apologize, but the, I had to put in a prompt uh, for the model. So the prompt said, you're a powerful computer model. You know, you got to build up the model self-esteem that assigns sentiment scores to text. You respond with one for positive text and zero for negative text. Only respond with a number that indicates the sentiment. Do not respond to anything else. Because I did notice the first time I did it, it was giving me like some, oh, I think it's like a one. I'm like, I just want the numbers. You have to be very clear about that. And then these fields come from the that empty table we built. And then there's a flow variable here that puts in the message. So every time the loop runs, one of the reviews is sent uh, through the model. It's okay, so I do apologize. I was meant to explain that earlier. So yes, now I'm going to join the model's responses to our data set to, you know, pretty much test things. So I'm going to join the counter to iteration column. So here I have the iteration column and I have the counter pretty much joining the identifiers and I'm going to grab the sentiment scores from our, the, um, the data set, the original data set. So I'm just going to do a row engine to pretty much see if these two values are the same. So I'm doing a row engine and I'm going to, yeah, I'll just leave it called prediction. So I want to see if the message, which is the response, that's pretty much the sentiment from the model is the same as the sentiment that we had in, in the data. Now, I believe these were human scored, but I'm not quite sure because the data set was trying to use neural networks to predict sentiment and those sentiments were provided. Um, so I, I would think they're human scored. But anyways, I am cross-referencing these two. So if these two are equal, then agree. And then otherwise, disagree. Okay. All right. So I'm going to run this rule engine. And what do you know? Ah, so there is one case that they disagree. So overwhelmingly, they do agree. Now let's look at this record. Let's see what's up with that. So the algorithm thought it was negative and it was scored as positive. So this is uh, record number 23. So let us go and see what that one is. 23, that's this one right here. 23. I'm just going to put it on a, on a note. Um, I think maybe word might be better so we can like clearly read this. Make this big. Um, where is this? Yes. Okay. Almost four years. I'm going to read this in my head. You can do the same. So sure. My question.
Hmm. Now, this is rather interesting. Me as a human, for me, this is positive. Like, it's pretty much talking about how groundbreaking this movie is and how closely it maps up to reality. But there are some words which are used, you know, which are you know, on the negative side. We're talking about a war. We're talking about senses of, you know, maybe maybe related to fear. They're talking about the hair standing up on the back of my neck. So I can see how the model can think this is negative. You know, but, you know, these are the certain nuances that models, which, again, I train on so much data, they're just not going to get, you know, it takes a human perspective to get things like this. But overall, I think 29 out of 30 is rather good. And yeah, this has just showed you how you can, you know, integrate these models very effortlessly into your online workflow. Um, you know, for me, I really learned by building stuff. So I just wanted to do that to just get my hands wet. And I'm going to do similar things as I use the other nodes. But uh, I am going to do proper training videos like note by note. I plan to do something like I did with, with the 30 days of NIME. But this is more hands on and I think it's pretty cool. Like, you know, it's a pretty cool fast use case that companies can actually go out to use. So, yeah, I'm going to stop talking now. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.